thank you so very much for being here um, and um, for being this talk. Uh, so the, the plan I have with my talk, uh, can you read the slides first of all? Thank you. Um, the plan I have with my talk is, uh, is this one. Let's try to make it working. Right. So the agenda I had in mind was uh, to introduce a little bit uh, what PyScript is and what PyScript is not. Um, and talk about a little bit of PyScript from a deep science perspective. And to, to be fair, what you'll see in the slides is, is also coming up from all the wonderful conversation I've had in, in this couple of days with some of you. And in the last bit, it's going to be d uh, demo time, specifically talking about data visualization. Uh, first of all, has anyone here tried PyScript already? Good. So not many of you. Okay. So and and do you know already what PyScript is, or do you have a, a guess of what PyScript might be? Okay. Fantastic. So um, first of all, please be advised. PyScript is still an, in an alpha version under heavy development, uh, so there may be issues, there are known well-known issues, reusability, loading times, and so you should not expect to use that in production, and things may change often. And, and so this is one, another reason why I do believe this is a great time to have a talk about PyScript, because we, we need to, to get the community on board and see uh, what, can things can be, uh, what, what things can be done with PyScript. And so be ready that sometimes things can go really bad. Um, this is because, as I said, uh, it's all work in progress under every development. And uh, in fact, another thing I hope to, dis to showcase to you is the things I wanted to include in the examples I, um, I made, but didn't work, or the things I found out along the way. And in fact, it was kind of a my face when I was preparing the slides. Like, I wasn't sure if I fixed it or if it was totally broken. Anyway, um, so what PyScript is, first of all. Uh, PyScript looks like that. It's a, an HTML, including, um, it's a bit of dark, isn't it? Um, it's, it's an HTML um, showing um, this PyScript tag in which you can actually include Python code. And uh, if I'm being honest with you, the very first time I saw this project, uh, actually in a, in a preview stage, um, I had good PHP vibes. <laughs> it was like, hmm, interesting. Um, and, and that actually reminded me of, um, and we have to be honest, first of all. We know that we as Pythonists, we're very kind of opinionated people about uh, PHP, and <laughs> that's, that's a good one. And, um, and also, um, we all know that um, there's just one rule in the rule book of PHP. It's just like use something else. Um, but to be completely honest, uh, the, the thing I also remembered was kind of, uh, you know, coding and the browser. And it reminds me of, I don't know, who, who here has ever used the JSP in the past? Oh no, this is really a test on your, L, on your age at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm that old, and I do remember uh, the vibes of writing JavaScript page. The thing is, it's, it's, it, it's totally not. Despite it might look like that, it's totally not. And th there's a good reason why that um, I'm saying this. And uh, if, you, if you know what I'm talking about, if you know Java, Java server pages, this JSP thing, um, you can probably remember the struggle in setting up the web server, the Tomcat engine, and all the infrastructure you need to have this code running in the browser. There was a huge stack of software putting, all, putting the things all together just to run a dynamic web page. That was totally useless. But it's, it's, was, uh, it was actually the starting of very good things in software. And in fact, when you used to write uh, code in the browser, the, the, the follow-up of these kind of technologies was what we now call frameworks. Now we are so used to dev, uh, web frameworks like Django. Django is, is uh, I've been using Django since version 0.96. Now we have a Django 4. And so lots, lots, lots has happened. And, and there were lots of discussion back then, as in if, if that would ever made to the, to, you know, to the enterprise. 
And uh, so you have to think that that was the age in which Python was not so mainstream as it is today. And, and so um, the, the, these idea of bringing code in the HTML and so melting up all together, like the model, the view, the controller, everything there, was, was exactly what we wanted to run away from. And so development uh, web framework were, were born. And so it seems like we're going back to that, and, 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 and to some extent might look like that, and I, I do understand why. But the reason why I'm putting these memes here is because I want to highlight which is uh, the thing. This is actually not happening. And there's also another bit. Uh, I, I found this on Twitter, and um, I've, I've read around things like people saying, oh, cool, now we can run Python in the browser. We don't need JavaScript at all. And uh, I want to stress this uh, very clearly. This is certainly not the case. PyScript has not been developed to replace JavaScript and is not a drop-in replacement for JavaScript. It's quite the opposite, actually. PyScript loves JavaScript. And, and if anything, one thing we, we can say is that PyScript helps a lot integrating the two worlds, as in Python and JavaScript. And the reason why I'm saying this is because JavaScript is, we all know, is, is, it's a kind of a difficult language to deal with. You, you hate it or love it. It's, there's no way or other way around. But um, Python is so crucial in the data science. And so imagine what you can do if you actually bring these two words together. And this is also another reason why we're talking about digitization in the end. Um, Py, um, PyScript loves JavaScript um, because of Pyodide. Uh, so Pyodide is what is doing the heavy, heavy work. And um, it allows execution of Python over w w uh, Wasm. It brings the full PyData stack already into, into the environment. And it gives you direct access to the DOM and the manipulation, uh, the DOM manipulation objects. The things you were used to do in, in JavaScript normally, but now you can implement this in Python. And so you can, you, you always, if you're starting to, if you, if you get your bearings into, into PyScript, the things you will end up doing most of the time is from PyDide import, create proxy, fetch, open URL, there's some very useful utility functions, or something like from JS import document. We're going to see examples of that later on. And so to conclude this bit, uh, what is JavaScript in the end? Uh, sorry, PyScript in the end. PyScript is a framework that allows users to create rich Python applications that runs in the browser using HTML interface. Uh, the framework uses, um, um, provides users at every experience level with access to an expressive, easy to learn programming language with countless applications. And in fact, the mission and the vision of PyScript is, as you can see in, on the website, is bring, pr uh, bringing programming for the 99%. This is an, an important um, aspect we should probably talk about later. Um, in conclusion, in, very, in, in summary, um, PyScript is Python in the browser. It's a Python ecosystem running in the browser, so you can run many popular packages of Python in the scientific Python stack. And it's a bidirectional channel to communicate between Python and JavaScript. It's also and this is a, a, one of the, the, the features I like very much, is, is, a, is a great tool to handle environments. And this is going to be important for the PyData da, pay and data science bit. And it, it also includes, this is actually very interesting, also includes visual, uh, visual application development. So it includes um, in the API some components you can use to, to create some UI components in the browser, like buttons or text inputs, and, and, and things like that. We're all developers. So probably the, the, the second thing I did um, when I started working with PyScript where it was seeing if it, there was any integration with IDE. I'm happy to report that PyCharm is, is including uh, in the early access program version of, of the 2022 version, 0.2, I think, um, and uh, an, an initial support for PyScript actually is, is, quite, is quite robust. And this is the editor, uh, sorry, the IDE I'm using, I will be using later to showcase the, um, 
the examples. Uh, FYI, for those of you using VS Code, there is a plugin, uh, but not exactly working properly at the moment, so I don't recommend it. There's, there's lots of issues with that, especially because it's, um, it's re reformatting the code normally, uh, automatically. Um, you have to disable it in Visual Studio Code, and this can create issues when you're working with um, um, the, the PyScript part of Python, which is still something you have to, you have to take care of. Um, so why developing PyScript? Well, of course, why not? And um, PyScript, um, oh, more seriously, why PyScript is so important from a data science perspective, in my opinion. Um, first of all, something you have to think about is whenever you have Python running in a browser, you're essentially changing completely the perspective of envir environment computation. In, in data science, we're so used of, of, of thinking about reproducibility as a synonym sometimes, uh, or most of the time, as a synonym, a synonym for Docker. So we have Docker to do everything. And so we think in terms of Docker cont containers. And so we have to set up a Docker container, which is not a very lightweight thing to deal with, um, with just one purpose in mind, sharing an environment. Because what we do care about in terms of reproducibility is I want to guarantee you that you're going to use more or less the same, the same computational environment you've been using so far. And this goes to, to the extent of packages and package versions. But of course, to do that, you need a lot of infrastructure. What if instead we could use web browsers as ubiquitous virtual machines? So an, a, an ubiquitous engine in which, on one hand, you have all the security requirements already guaranteed for you because it's, it's a web browser. And on the other end, you do have an environment that allows you to, to be on whichever machine with no installation required and no environment required. I want to stress this out because this is one of the main features I like the most in PyScript. You don't need Python on your machine to run PyScript. And this is outstanding, in my opinion. It, it, thing, it, it brings things to a different level. And why no environment? Actually, the environment can be handled, and it's self-contained. So PyScript, this, this is why I, I stressed out that earlier. PyScript um, is, a, is, a, is a thing, what it is really, is a thin framework which sits on top of Pyodide. Pyodide is doing the heavy job, as I said, but PyScript puts the things on top that PyDead is missing, because actually it's out of the scope of the project. PyDead is bringing Python to Wasm. Uh, Py yes, PyDead. PyScript, on the other hand, is, is, is making what is necessary to bring this kind of technology to the data science world in a, in a, in a, in a way which is, um, which is going towards what data science needs. And, and as I said, probably one of the first things we, we might need is how do we share an environment? And PyScript has a component, which is called PyEnv, to do what you need, to set up your environment. You can add REPL, and this is what we like in, in data science. We're so used to Jupyter that we want to add REPL. We can add REPL to web pages. And so, for example, we can have components like this. This is a REPL. I don't know if you can see that clearly, but I can type in this thing. So this is a REPL. I can type import this. I can run it, and I get the result directly into the browser. I can import anti-gravity, because in Python we know we love pans and things like that. D do you know what import anti-gravity does normally? No? Cool. So when you import, and uh, this is uh, actually something I, I do highly recommend you to do normally in your IPython browser, you, when you import anti-gravity, uh, it links to this, oh, I'm sorry, this, doesn't, this is not really clear. Um, uh, you have uh, this XKCD, um, I promise you on my screen is way better, I'm sorry. Um, 
you have this XKCD comic, but the interesting bit in, in PyScript, and so the power of bringing Python to the web browser, is when you do something like antigravity.fly. Whoops, and that's my bad. There you go. <laughs> now you make it flying, really. So, um, enough with the chit chat. And, yeah, this is one of my favorite. Uh, let's go with the demo. Uh, we can do some, actually, uh, before moving to the data visualization bit, uh, this is uh, the, the, the very last example of um, REPL. You can actually have serious code, whatever serious means, um, running here in the browser. So I can run it, and it takes a little bit because performance is still an issue at the moment. Just be advised. And you can generate from this code the actual output. So this is simulating what you can the experience of a Jupyter notebook. So you have a REPL and an HTML div in which you put the output. And I'll show you in a second how can you actually do this. How simple is that? It's very intuitive, you have to remember that. Um, let me see what, what's next. OK, data this time. Um, let me now move to the, to the code first. Uh, this goes later. Right. OK, first off, can you read the code? Probably not. Just try, let me try to, what's the, all right. OK. So what you need to have it set up. It's, it's an HTML file. This is Hello World. So um, what you have to do is to include PyScript.css and PyScript.js. The CSS is actually needed for the, the, com the UI components. And all you need to do is to import this JavaScript uh, file, which is, from, uh, which is called PyScript.js, and you're ready to go. Uh, in this particular case, what we're doing here is we creating a new script, which is called PyScript. And in case you're wondering uh, why the dashing, it's, it's because um, um, this is in, in accordance to the specification of the web. Whenever you have to make a new uh, HTML tag, it has to contain hyphens in the names. And so that is why PyScript. Uh, so as you can see here, well, I can probably do better like highlighting here. This is Python code. And so we are running this Python code into this PyScript tag environment. And this is what we get. So just to clarify, I'm going to show you refreshing this. And this is what we get. So now we have date and time uh, calculated in Python. OK. So let's move on to something more interesting which is, um, first thing, of course, in, in uh, data visualization is how do we, do we make it uh, working with matplotlib? Um, matplotlib um, is very easy. And this, the first I want to showcase, there's very few things to, to say about it, but one thing I'm going to show you. Essentially, um, the, main fe the first feature I want to show you is Whenever you can specify what is the output, the destination of the output, um, in this particular case is the ID of the div where you want to put the output of the, of the computation. And you can do that by saying output equal to the ID of the, of the items you want, which is this one, just on top. So when we run this, this code, the output of this code is going to be into this, this item here. Um, what I'm going to show you here is, is a simple example in which you have um, matplotlib running into the browser. Okay, this is a normally normal matplotlib. Another thing you, you may want to do if you want to improve the, the rendering of the visualization, you can use a different um, backend for matplotlib, which is HTML5. I've discovered this looking at the um, uh, Pyodide blog post kind of thing. I found it on the web. And um, as you can see, there's a huge difference in terms of, I don't know if you can actually see it, but when you run it on your computer, you can totally see the difference from, from the, well, of course, this is an image, this is an interactive thing. Uh, and at the same time, the, the rendering of the, 
of the font is, is better. Uh, to do that, you have to essentially load this module into Matplotlib and, and use it as, as the uh, backend, the rendering backend. The code is, ex is exactly the same. Um, feel free to interrupt if you have any questions, by the way, no, no worries at all. So now the, my journey into this uh, for you is going to be like Im improving or changing the technologies so that we're going towards understanding what is the potential that, of things that we can do at the same time, how easy is to code these things because it's important to, th this is one of the, uh, one, another feature we should always keep in mind because let's face it, digitalization done, uh, let me, not properly, but done it in the JavaScript way is, is, is cumbersome for us Pythonistas because the API is not familiar, to, is, is not very, you know, um, close to what we used to in Python. And so in the Python ecosystem, by the way, we've had lots of lots of projects, super interesting ones, which are aiming towards, towards having this, you know, uh, API simplification as much as possible so that we, ha we have easy to tools that we can easily use in Python, which will do the heavy job of translating things into JavaScript. And probably the first uh, in, in, in the series is Bokeh. Has anyone ever used Bokeh here? Yeah, this is around for many years. And Bokeh was, was amazing uh, when it was released because essentially was the, the very first um, interactive plotting library in Python. It was is is like Python API translating everything into um, into JavaScript objects, and and nowadays that data science is moving at the pace of APIs. Um, tools like this are amazing because they easily integrate APIs talk in, in JavaScript and JSON, and so you can actually embed um, you can return plots from an API using using Bokeh, and so that that was what we did a long time ago, but that was actually uh, one of the potentials of tools like that. And so why is him, uh, w w another reason why it's so important. Um, integrating Bokeh is, is as easy as you can see, and, and code-wise is easy as well. And this gives me the opportunity to bring on the attention on one feature I overlooked before, which is the environment thing I, I mentioned before. In, 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 um, in PyScript, you can specify what is the environment you need into the, the page, which automatically, so technologically speaking, it works like that. So Pyodide includes the, the PyData stack, uh, but loading all the stack in memory would be useless if you don't need it. Uh, so what you normally do is you load it using JavaScript or uh, through Pyodide. What PyScript is doing for you, using the PyEnv, is that you can, you can specify a YAML version of your environment saying what are the packages you need, and these will, will be brought into the namespace and memory whenever you need it. Simple as that. If you, if you see the equivalent, um, the, the instructions to do this in, in, Py, in Pyodide is, is way more complicated because it's using different tools in the, in the, uh, in the back end. Um, there's also another bit. This PyM um, tag has lots of um, interesting features, lots of perks. Uh, you, you can bring on in your environment uh, the packages PyDAD already includes, but you can also include in your package, um, sorry, in your environment, any Python, pure Python package you can install from pip. So you can specify, instead of a name, you can specify the U URL of a wheel of Python, and that will be installed and bring, uh, brought into your environment automatically. And again, this is all running into your browser. I'll show you an example later on about this. Last but not least, you can actually also load modules from your local domain. So you uh, essentially have everything you need. And um, this will be the next, uh, next example. So this is using full-fledged feature of PyScript with PyEnv, 
we do need just Bokeh and NumPy in this code. And in fact, this is the code we need. The only thing to highlight in this code, probably, is that since Bokeh is, is talking JavaScript in the end, um, the way in which you can inter integrate um, Bokeh plot into the, um, you, you, you can return the Bokeh plot as a JSON, as a JavaScript object directly using the Bokeh API. And this will go automatically into the div you want to, to write to. Um, the rest of it is simple, a scene function using NumPy, not, nothing particularly fancy. To make things actually fancier, uh, what I did was, was moving into making an interactive plot in, in Bokeh. So we, we are so used to interactivity with Bokeh that we, 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 we normally expect something like that, so a, a much more com and rich and more complicated dashboard. So I'm using the MPG, um, um, auto MPG data set included in the Bokeh sample data. And I'm going to show you how can you actually generate different plots. So now I am interacting with widgets generated by Bokeh. This is pure pocket, uh, Bokeh code. And I'm going diff to uh, change different settings, and so the plotting will be automatically updated. So what I'm doing is essentially bringing what I normally go in writing into Python applications or Jupyter Notebooks. But this time, everything goes into a simple HTML file. Simple, like in quotes, I would say. Simple because it, it's rich in terms of what it contains, but it's simple in terms of data format. And this goes like that, and I can keep on going. And at the same time, you do have all the interactivity you, you would expect from using a bokeh plot here. This is an over tool, uh, which is this one. I can disable, as you can see. And this is a zoom bit you can use. This is a normal bokeh plot. OK. Um, moving on, um, alter is another is an interesting data visualization package. Um, Alter is interesting because it's, it's tackling the problem of data visualization from a different perspective. Alter is a, is a Python uh, API on top of Viga, which is a, which a um, I would say it's a declarative data visualization tool, um, which is essentially tries to write, describe a, to a, a chart in a, in a JSON manner and, and so you can write uh, the, de the, 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 the uh, details of this tool, and, 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 and Alter is, is bringing the, a Python API on top of it. And um, what I'm doing in this example is showcasing how you can actually load a local file, because all the coding here is living into a separate module, which is called altercharts.py. <laughs> And so another, another attribute I'm showcasing here, PyScript, is the source um, attribute. So you can load the content of a PyScript snippet from a separate file, which is this one. And so it lives locally uh, on my computer. And this also brings, um, so alter a pandas. I can't remember exactly whether alter or is it already included or not into Pyodide. Uh, Viga did sets probably not, so this will be installed. Uh, I'm, I'm going by memory to be fair, so I, 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 I might probably be wrong. Um, this also brings on another important aspect of things. Um, Altercharts.py is a file living locally, which means you can have access to the file system, but there's a big but. You, you, can, uh, you, you cannot do that in a, in a static web page. You need to run this web page in a web server because otherwise you will be violating course policy and so you cannot do that. It's, it's impossible to do that. So this will bring to a different discussion. Maybe if we have time in the end, we can, we can talk about it. But the, the point is um, you have to serve this page uh, for in, in a web server. So what I'm doing right now is like using the simple HTTP server uh, from Python, uh, or as, as we saw yesterday in the Lightning Talks, for those of you here, this could normally go into a GitHub page on a GitHub repository, which is actually where this is going to be in the end. 
Um, I'll share the, the link on Slack uh, when I'll put everything there. Um, let's move on. Uh, this is taken from the uh, examples you find already into um, the set of examples in PyScript. This is showcasing how you can use Volume. Volume is a wonderful tool to work with map. And what, what we saw here is the interactivity integrated into the browser. And probably one of the most important things to highlight here is that all the computation is running on the client side. And this also goes for another example and something we saw yesterday already, again in the lightning talks. But the, the, the most important bit to stress out is you have to remember that since everything lives in the client side, you don't have, you, you, you cut off all the lag and, and the overhead you might have when you have API communication back and forth from the back end to the front end and vice versa. Um, what I want to show you uh, instead of the actual output here in volume is how easy to work with these things. So here is the actual code. So what we're doing is we load the data from a URL using standard pandas. Uh, the, only, the only bit to remember is that we open the U URL using pyodide. Uh, then we convert it in, 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 in JSON object. We pass it to a volume map um, object. Then we create uh, the coral flat on, on, the, on the map. And then we add it to the layer control. And that's it. So there's few lines of code are generating that visualization. There's no more than that, I promise. This is the only code I needed. And volume is the div in which everything leaves. So as you can see, we can have effective data visualization results in a very few lines of code. And this is also the case uh, that brings on the next tool I want to highlight, which is HVplot. HVplot is, is a wonderful tool, which is, is, is trying to uh, take the best of many worlds, in particular is, is integrating uh, perfectly with bulk hair, with the hall of views, with data shaders, which is uh, automatically choosing uh, the right backhand depending on the amount of data you have. Uh, this is just to, this is a simple plot to showcase that actually HP plot works. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because this goes into the uh, cumbersome at the moment, but soon not to uh, examples I want to highlight. Um, there's a huge shout out to uh, to Philip, um, core developer of um, uh, Philip Rudiger, who gave me, we worked together on this um, uh, the other day. Um, and it goes like that. So essentially, there was, a, there was a little issue that will be probably soon fixed in Pyodide, which didn't allow uh, in Pyodide to install package in a pre release version. This is what I told you. This, uh, this is in under active development, so you have to work with these things. Um, this is to showcase how you can actually import a will and with a full URL. But this will is a pre-release of all of yous because all of yous is getting there into supporting fully PyScript. At the moment, it's in pre-release, but Pyodide didn't like a pre-release package into that. And so the way we worked around that was using MicroPip, which is the package manager included in Pyodide, to work to install these things automatically and to fool it by saying the version that we have it is the 1.15.0 and, and and there you go. So this this sort of a hackish solution made the things working. And most importantly, the reason why we, I wanted to do this is because I want to showcase the next example, which is integrating. Um, no, that's not the, the one. The one I wanted is. There you go. This is integration with HVplot and panel, which is the, the last tool of the list I wanted to highlight. Um, it, the code is simple as that, and that's why I'm telling you this. So here's the hackish solution again. Uh, we include panel, and look at how simple is, is that. So panel brings in, uh, we had the lighting talks yesterday. Uh, look at it, the project is amazing. It's is bringing easy, ways and in an intuitive Python API to write um, uh, rich uh, interactive applications. In this case, they're running into the browser thanks to PyScript. And we are creating the widgets here, which is a panel column, including the select origin and select cylinder, which are another two widgets 
provided by panel. And this function, th thanks to HV plot, is essentially the function that controls these widgets. So, or the other way around, this function is controlled by the widgets. So with these four lines of code, we have created this simple application, which is having the widget take in the data from a data, fr data frame and an interactive plot we can play with. It's just three lines of code. And so for those of you thinking, well, if you, instead of bringing Python to the, to, the, to the web to not write JavaScript, let's learn JavaScript and, and that's it, this is why I'm telling you this. You, there's no way you can do so easy um, things like this into JavaScript. So it, the API is different. So um, this is another reason why, thank you, uh, another reason why uh, PyScript is so crucial in these in this things. Um, so in the interest of time, I just want to highlight um, the other example I have and you'll find there will, will be taken a more rich examples of things you can do. Uh, this is panel uh, on a penguin state set. So this is way richer. I just showcase things here so you can interact with widgets. Uh, you can change, this is a k-means clustering running. You can reduce the number of clusters. Uh, the interesting bit here is that you can select data from here and having the, the table updated at, um, automatically. So this is, the, is a way richer example than what I've done so far. Um, I just, oh, this is a streaming demo. This is absolutely interesting. Probably something similar shown in the lightning talk yesterday. Again, taken from the set of examples already available, available in PyScript. Um, I want to uh, conclude with three things, actually. So the first is something we found out the other day. So uh, the, the, this example is really ugly, actually. It's, it's unfinished, but it's, it's more what's, what's behind that we want to talk about. Uh, what I really wanted to do, since you can bring all the PyData stack, the main PyData stack into the browser, scikit learn included, uh, we wanted to, I wanted to showcase digits they'd set TSNE um, um, dimension reduction result. Long story short, let me show the case, uh, the code. Uh, long story short, we, um, it was me and Guillaume Lemaitre, um, core developer of scikit learn, and we realized that if you, if you don't pass in this, so apparently internally, and this is a discussion they were having in Second Learn at the same time, uh, probably a couple of weeks ago, the TSNE implementation is, is doing some numerical optimization for memory consumption. So if you pass in float 64 numbers, uh, sorry, sorry num uh, integer 64 numbers, like I was doing, uh, which is the default uh, data type, uh, Second Learn internally makes it in integer 32, for, of course, because if you don't need that precision, you reduce memory and so computation is faster. But apparently, Pi and I didn't like integer 32. And so this example didn't work. So to make this working, we had essentially two communities bringing together effort into understanding what was going on. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because um, the, uh, another reason why I, I, I'm, I was so happy to do this talk is because at this stage, PyScript is probably community as well in the features that we want to list. Because of the, uh, Py, PyScript is, is, is becoming the connector, the, you know, the, the funnel of many communities bringing together into what is potentially being the, the platform of computation for data science of the future, which is the browser, apparently. And so this is actually a, a very interesting example I want to showcase. And so to fix this, I had to make a PCA first and pass in, because if you pass the initialization vector to TSNE, TSNE is not doing any, any, any mess with your data type. If it's randomly initialized, it does conversion, and so PyDI doesn't like it. Um, the reason why I ended up doing the bench reduction is because I wanted to showcase something quite new, as in, let's try UMAP. Has anyone ever used UMAP? So UMAP internally uses number to make computation going very fast. But number is, is JIT compiled and runs on LLVM, uh, which is not WASM. And so number at the moment is not yet supported by Pyodide, but I just want to show the issue 
that they're actually working on it. Uh, no, this, that's Philip. Um, the issue I want to, yes, there you go. There's this uh, open on the 2nd of May this year. So again, this is super active development uh, in, in, in number. Uh, they're working on this. And so probably uh, the um, number on um, WASM and so PyUdide and so PyScript might be a thing in the near future. Uh, last but not least, um, in, in, in the list of demo, I want to highlight the demo of all demos, this slideshow. I made this slideshow using PyScript. And how I did it, hmm, glad, I, glad you asked, um, even if you didn't. Um, <laughs> actually, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. So I have this slides HTML. And the slides in HTML is including, first off, well, the path of local files, anti-gravity I showed you before. But more importantly, is creating a widget thanks to PyScript. So I've created the slides.py, um, which is this component, has been registered as a widget. And what I actually, actually is not my work. This is Fabio's work. Um, I'm, I'm, I, fixed th these and that, but essentially is his work um, for presented as in uh, the keynote of Pike in Italia, to be fair. And um, the, the cool bits of this is that slides are actually made, is super, super acky, but is, is a textual file. So it's a textual slash HTML file. And so the slides you're seeing here is like created automatically and, and generated automatically by PyScript. So and in fact, you can, I can give it away by doing something like, no, that's not one, something like that. So if I refresh this, PyScript goes, gets loaded. I am not going to do this because I just want to wrap up and thank you so very much for this talk. Thank you very much, Valerio. Right, we have time for one question. That was super quick. Oh, there we go. I'm going to take that one at the back, just in the interest of time and having to change the room around. Sorry, that was... Here we go. Hi. Hi. Um, what, are, what are the limits on memory and CPU applied on PyScript? Like, is, is Chrome doing that, or is Biodyne doing that behind? Or? Uh, right, that's a very good question. So first off, something I should say, PyScript at the moment, as far as I know, has been tested just in Chrome. That's why I'm using Chrome. So uh, things may, may be different on other browsers. Uh, at the moment, performance issues is a thing. So it's, uh, you, you have to expect a little bit of delay in terms of computation, especially when you run things. Uh, you don't have to, you, you, there's no buffered output, for example, at the moment. So if you do the printing, you, you, that, that's going to appear in the end when the computation has ended. Um, and um, the, um, as far as I know, the, com the, the limits of computation is, 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 is a pyodide level. And so what's happened to me was sometimes that the browser complained and saying, this page is taking too long. Do you want to kill it or do you want to wait? But honestly, it's uh, one way to circumvent this would be to uh, to, in, in, to, to save some time in memory, you can download PyScript locally and load it uh, or build it locally or uh, load it locally rather than the API. That saves time a little bit. Um, this is what, what I know at the moment. Lovely. Thank you very, thank you, Valerio. Thank you.